Once again, Candice, thank you so much for having me on your page, Freedom Finders Inner Circle. Okay, it is now officially 12.30. And I have quite a little bit prepared for you all. So, uh, and if I can, um, I'll do some Q&A at the end. So if you are watching later, uh, and you do have questions, pop them in the comment area because I will circle back and address your questions. But if you have them live, we'll see how the time goes at the end. But I will, I promise to address any questions directly in the comment area. Um, if it's private, we can take it off and I'll chat with you there. But um, for right now, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And uh, thank you, Candice Gray, for having me here on your page. I'm assuming this is the process. Um, we haven't personally chatted, but you had some pretty great instructions in your um, preamble to this. So Trudy Behrman here. My company is Profitable Stewardship Inc. I am a stewardship consultant. What does that mean? Stewardship is Christian jargon. If you're not, um, it, and even some... Um, Denominations may not use that word, but stewardship is a, a, a word that means manager. You're a manager of something, okay? So Christians are, are stewards. According to the Bible, God owns it all, and what we have, we have from him. So the idea of ownership is, is, is man-made. We really don't own anything, guys. If you're a Christian, I hope you're willing to embrace that right up front. We're all stewards, and some of us are not really good stewards. Some of us are better stewards than others, better managers of others. And there are several things that God has put under our control to manage. All of us have a body. All of us have a mind. All of us have tick-tock, tick-tock time. How we manipulate these things, how we manage these things, is how we generate cha-ching money. So we need to be good stewards of what God has put under our control and then we will create the life that we deserve. So today I'm actually going to be talking about the law of attraction Bible style. People seem to think the law of attraction is, is something that's just out there in woo-woo land. Um, you know, those special people who talk about manifesting and all this and it's, 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 it is in a, historically a very new concept. The law of attraction is relatively a new concept per history. The phrase was coined, law of attraction as a phrase was coined back in the 1900s. It came out of a book written by William Atkinson. He wrote the book, The New Thought Movement, Thought Vibration, and The Law of Attraction. So he didn't really come up with the concept of what law of attraction is, but he did coin, he's, he's credited with coining the phrase law of attraction, which has continued on into our current time as something to do, something to strive for. Lots of people talk about law of attraction. It is not uh, considered a Christian, um, Christian concept, but I'm here to tell you that the, at, you know, the law of attraction is simply a coined phrase to describe something that absolutely is a biblical concept. Because, um, let me, uh, law of attraction is basically the process of manifesting things into your life. Manifesting. That's what law of attraction does. It allows you to manifest things into your life. Well, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and if you can hear me, guys, if you're on live, please let me know. Please put up in your com in the comment area, say here, so I know you're here. Give me some thumbs up, whatever, so I know you're here live. If you're not here live and you're listening later, fantastic. Um, if you have any questions, comments, encouragement, support, I'd still appreciate that. Drop in the comment box. I promise I will circle back. And address all of them. So Trudy Behrman here, if you're jumping in a little, little, little bit later, I am a stewardship consultant and we're talking about law of attraction, Bible style. I'm not going to give you too much of my blah, 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 who am I? Um, you can certainly visit my website. Candice did a good job in her um, picture introduction of me. I'm a stewardship consultant, I'm an author, and my business is Profitable Stewardship Inc. 
So law of attraction, Bible style, law of attraction is a very relatively new concept in terms of history, but the, it is not a new concept in terms of what it is. Law of attraction is a process of manifesting things into our life, okay? And manifestation, according to Merriam-Webster dictionary, is dis defined as a perceptible, outward, or visible expression. That's what a manifestation is. A perceptible, outward, visible expression. So it's something outward and perceptible, okay? We can pretty much see it, okay? We manifest things into our lives. And those people who believe in the law of attraction are huge on this manifestation trip. You're going to hear them talk about it a lot. And within the Christian circles, law of attraction is not considered, I'm trying to put my glasses so that I have less of a, a, a screen off of them, um, <clears throat> less of a Christian idea, but it very much is, guys. Law of attraction very much is a Christian idea. Uh, concept. The phrase law of attraction is not, but the what what law of attraction is, is very much biblical and I hope to prove that before the end of this time. Now when we when we, when we we um, manifest things, we can see it. According to the Merriam Dictionary, it's an outward, perceptible, visual experience. So it's something we can see. It's vision. You can see it. Our vision. Okay? Now vision is an important concept. Okay? The Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18, Proverbs 29, 18, and of course every version will read a little bit differently, but Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Perish is another word for die. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Lock into this for a second because I'm coming back to that. Perish means die. If you have no vision, when God's people have no vision, they die. Okay? But John 10.10, 10, John 10.10 10 says, and Jesus is speaking, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Perish. Right? The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Perish. But Jesus, he says, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You see, a lot of people miss the and. And and is a word that joins two concepts together. So Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. A lot of people only receive the first part. So Christians, when they get saved, they've gotten the life ticket, right? They came that, Jesus came that they could have life. They receive salvation. They have that eternal life in heaven. Yay! We all have that. Well, what about the second part of the verse? And have it more abundantly. A lot of you are missing out on that. Okay, Jesus came. Why did he come? He told us. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And you guys are missing out big time. You know, I'd like to think someone's here. If you're here, guys, send me some thumbs up or join me. Um, I wish I could share this on my personal page, but this was a private um invite to a private group and so I guess you have to be a member of this group to be watching this so uh, I promise you I will circle back if you're watching this later and give me some comments of encouragement support if you have questions I promise you I will circle back and address all of those so lot we're talking about law of attraction Bible style guys law of attraction is a manifestation process According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the manifestation is defined as a perceptible outward or visual, visible expression, which means it's something you can see, and it is an absolutely biblical concept. The Bible says where there's no vision, our people will perish, which means die, and Jesus said he came that he would have life and have it more abundantly. I'm suggesting to you guys that you jump on the abundance train, okay? So... Um, here is another verse for you, if you don't believe me. Um, this, I, my authority, guys, forget my credentials, and I have many in the financial space. My authority, my credibility, oh, everything that I'm telling you here today, for the work that I do, comes from the pages of the Bible. That's where I take my power and authority from. And when I speak boldly and confidently, it's not, you can, you can say anything you want. I'm not being arrogant. I'm just totally... Um, 
using the foundation of the Bible, which as far as I'm concerned is the infallible word of God. That's where I take my power and confidence and, uh, and authority from. And yes, I have fin uh, credentials in the financial space. You can look me up on trudybearman.com. That's not the focus of this right now. Mark 11, verse 24, Jesus is speaking. He says, listen to me. Are you listening? Jesus says, listen to me. You can pray for anything. And if you believe, you can have it. If that does not sum up law of attraction, Bible style, then I don't know what does. Okay? Jesus has told us he came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. So for all of you wondering what's the whole point of this Christianity thing, it's to give us life in heaven eternally and abundant life. Now, abundance can be seen in different ways because abundance means an, a lot of, of something. Okay? A lot of joy, a lot of... A time span life, a lot of money, a lot of stuff to share. Abundance is abundance. It's just a lot, okay? And Jesus said he came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. And Mark eleven twenty four says, listen to me. You can pray for anything. And if you believe, you can have it. So the process here is desire, which leads for you to ask which goes on for you to have to believe it in order for you to receive it. Now, I want to focus in on the word believe, okay, because this is the, this is the real key here. You can ask for anything, but it says, and if you believe. See, you can ask for anything. We can ask for anything we want, but if you don't believe it, you're not going to have it. Jesus says, if you believe, you can have it. Now, I'm assuming that Christians are going to, um, desire whatever is the will of God because people who are in right relationship with God are going to be very in tune to his desire for their life. And some of you may need to start there to figure out what is God's purpose for your life because we want to be in tune with God's purpose for our life. It's like when you are married, you know your husband very well. Without him being there, you can know what he would like or not like. And that's kind of what I'm talking about here. So, the thing that you're going to be asking for should very much be um, in keeping with not only God's will for your life, but um, it should not be something that is off God's um, way of life. So in other words, uh, if you're single, you should not be asking God for the married man. That just doesn't work. Hi, Candice. Thank you for being on. So remember, if this verse doesn't sum this up for you, then you're listening to the wrong um, um, life, life feed, okay? But law of attraction Bible style, this is the sum verse that this is, this hinges, I mean, the Bible has many wonderful verses, but Mark 11, 24, and Jesus was speaking, listen to me, you can pray for anything, and if you believe, you can have it. So let's tap in on that believe thing for a minute. Believe is a strong and important word. We're talking here pretty much about faith, faith, okay? Remember that because I'm coming back to it. Right now, I made a little chart, and I know um, Facebook Live tends to put things backwards, but it looks like it's looking fine. Okay, so this is your life, okay? This is your life, and there are some components that make up the circle of your life. So, for example, um, we all have a body. <laughs> well, it goes back ways here. We all have a body, and we, you know, that body exists in time, tick tock, tick tock. Some of us have more than others. Some of us are wasting, wasting our time, management, stewardship. Okay, how are you taking care of this body? Are you doing a good job? Okay, because if you're not doing a good job, you're automatically shortening this. How are you managing your time? How much are you getting done? Are you going to wait till you get to the end of your life and you have a lot of regrets? How are you managing your time? The heart, oh, oh. The heart is for relationships, the relationships you have with each other, the relationships you have with God, okay? And money, of course, is, oh, money, of course, is uh, uh, the symbol that I'm using for the resources. It's more of a resource thing. What are the resources that you have under your control? And those resources don't have to be money, guys. It can be your acumen, your brain. It can be your talent. It can be your network. It can be the people who you are around. It can be the books you've read, your, the skills you have. These are your resources because it's resources that we change into money. Have you ever heard this term, human resources? That is what companies use to convert human power into money. 
You are your best resource. If you haven't figured that out yet, uh, you need uh, you need a session with me, okay? You are your best resource, I promise you. So basically, guys, we need to get to, the, to your BS. We need to get to, we need to cut through your BS, okay? And that could be your belief system, okay? But we're also going to cut through that BS crap and help you get to your BS best self, best self. Self. So remember, Jesus said you can pray for anything, and if you believe, you can have it. So it comes down to faith and a matter of faith or your belief system. Now, a lot of people say, I hope this happens, and I hope that happens. I hope I get better. I hope I get the job. I hope, 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 hope. Hope for change, whatever. Hope. Hope is a nice word. Hope gets us moving, okay? Hope gives is a bit of a motivation. Hey, Candice, hope is motivation. It gets you started, but hope without evidence and substance will not last very long. We can hope, and if you don't see things lining up, that hope dissipates and goes away. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for so faith is 10 times level over hope okay hope is nice but hope is not gonna get you where you need to be because jesus said you can pray for anything and if you believe believe is not hope okay hope is i hope i get a job hope has an element of failure built in because if you hope you get the job then you might not get the job if you hope you get your, your marriage last then it may not last hope is not enough Hope will get you started. But that's why the Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, I'm a trained paralegal amongst my many qualifications. And evidence is important, guys. When when a when a lawyer or a, is not on the scene of the crime, when when people are not when the, the cops are not at the scene of the crime at the time, what are we looking for? Evidence. Evidence will help to to prove things. A drop of human blood will tell us emphatically that this person with this unique DNA was present. It doesn't mean they were present at the time of the crime, but they were literally at that site. Evidence. So we're not talking about, I hope. So when we're talking about law of attraction, manifesting things into our life, guys, this has nothing to do with hope. It is way beyond hope. It is faith. It is your belief. It is your the belief system. That BS, some of you have some serious BS that we need to cut out, okay? So we need to, we're working towards our best self, but you have to first look at your belief system. And it's way beyond hope. So if you want to manifest things into your life, you've got to be way above the level of hope, okay? So you have to basically have vision. That's how you're going to manifest things in. Hi, Corey. So... Here's the thing, for those of you who aren't Christian, because I, you know, there may be others listening that are like, okay, whatever. Law of attraction may have brought you in, but it's law of attraction Bible styles so we're talking about. So the salvation experience, like I said, Jesus said he came that we could we would have life and have it more abundantly. Don't forget the and part, okay? Because a lot of you we got our ticket to heaven. That's our salvation experience. But we didn't pick up on the and have it more abundantly part. The salvation experience should usher in change, 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 change. Okay, the salvation experience will usher in change. Change is like you're not whoring anymore. You're not hanging at the bars. This, these are things that bleed your cash, guys. Remember, the thief comes and he would still steal, kill, and destroy. He's stealing your money right out of your wallet. When you don't hang with God and live that lifestyle, your, God, your money's bleeding out. You don't even see it. The thief is stealing it. But when the salvation experience brings change, there's some literal changes that happen. Because remember, it's fruit. It's not, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Talk, 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 talk is cheap. Change. There will be fruit. Okay, there will be evidence, evidence. And there's going to be change, one of which is not just your lifestyle change, but you may also start tithing. Tithing positions us for favor. I won't get into tithing, but just keep that in mind. Tithing positions of us for favor. Okay, so change. So a lot of us desire, oh, I wish my life looked like this. 
I wish I could have that. I wish, I wish, I wish. Desire. There's a difference between desiring something and deserving something, okay? Many of us desire wonderful things, but we deserve very little. We deserve very little, and that, so it doesn't matter what you desire if you deserve very little. And how, what does that come into it? What is that deserving? I'm here, therefore I'm entitled. Prosperity, it, according to the Bible, is not an entitlement. It is a position for favor. Prosperity is, you don't just become a Christian and the next day a Bentley shop in your driveway. That's not how it works. Forgive the Jamaican accent coming out. <laughs> You're getting me on my trip here, okay? So, being a Christian, that having that salvation experience positions us for favor. Positions us, it doesn't guarantee it. So we, you're dreaming of a life you desire, but the life you live is the one you deserve. Why is it that, that that's what you deserve? That's what you position yourself for. That's what you work towards. That's what every day you wake up and you put in place. You did it. I don't want to hear about the, the economy, your mother, your husband, your wife, your children, your friends. No, 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 no. We are in 100% control of how we respond to anything. I may not be able to to stop you from spitting in my face, but do I have to punch you? Do I have to cuss you out? How I respond is 100% up to me, and the moment that I choose how to respond, it's going to change the flow of everything going forward. Because if I punch you, I'm going to have a different future outcome than if I simply wiped it away, said God bless you, and moved on. Okay, so believe leads to the manifestation of what? Of work. Here's that nasty four letter word a lot of people don't like. W O R K. And I have an acronym for that. Um, and I forget what it is right now. <laughs> so I didn't come prepared to tell you about that one. So when we talk about um, love, attraction, or, or prosperity in within Christendom, the phrase that does come up, we don't use love attraction in the Christian space. You know what they say? Prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel. Let me tell you something. There's only one gospel, and it is not a prosperity gospel. There is one gospel, and the gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ. Well, what did Jesus come here and tell us? He said his own words. He told us why he came. He said, I came so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Now, a lot of, I mean, see, when people think of the prosperity gospel, they have two ways of looking at it. That faith leads to prosperity and prosperity is a proof that you have faith so if your life is one where you don't have the bentley in your parking lot and you're not flashing the gucci first then you're not a christian that is rubbish okay prosperity is not proof of your faith prosperity is an outcome a positional outcome and what we do get with the salvation experience is our ticket to heaven that's the first part of the i came that you can have life and have it more abundantly part is that second piece. Not everybody picks up on that. So all those people who preach the what is known as a prosperity gospel, be careful of those who suggest to you that lack of these things, these materialistic things, is proof that you're not your faith isn't where it needs to be. That's not that's not biblically correct. When prosperity is and is not entitled it is not entitled but it is absolutely within reach and there are ways to position yourself for God's favor which may or may not show up in materialistic uh, prosperity because he said that we'd have life more abundantly abundance can be displayed in many ways but there are also those that consider uh, faith to be a life of poverty Okay, those are the people who are going to tell you like 1 Timothy 6 verses 9 through 10. Those who want to, and this is what the Bible says, those who want to get rich fall into temptation. Remember that part, fall into temptation and a trap. And into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into, into ruin and destruction. For, though, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay, guys, look at this part again. Fall into temptation and a trap. What does John 10, 10 say again? The thief comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So the Christian is not um, going to be uh, not bothered by the devil. Jesus himself was tempted. But how do we respond? Okay, so when when you have something worth stealing, the, the devil may come 
knocking on your door. What are you going to do? Fall into the trap? Well, that's totally up to you. And you will fall into the trap if the love of money is present. This is where I think that we're five minutes left. The danger comes in for many of these prosperity gospel preachers is that they shift from a paradigm of stewardship, managing what God has given them to a position of ownership. That is a wrong place to be, guys. Think of if you were the CEO of a top corporation and you were highly paid and had perks of the company. That's what it's like to be a Christian in prosperity under God, being a good steward. Everything belongs to God. You have access, you have control, but it ain't yours. The moment you slip over into ownership, my car, my house, my neighborhood, that's those are the people who are going to fall into the trap. Prosperity is not the trap. The devil comes with the trap. Um... So God does not give out things on equality, guys. I'm sorry for the socialistic agenda. I'm sorry, but God does not operate on a socialistic agenda. It says in Matthew 25, 15, and there, I want to read the first part of the, the Good News translation. It says, he gave to each one according to his ability. In another translation, it goes, to one he gave five talents, to another two and to another one. I'm sorry, we have not all been given an equal share. Sorry, that's not how God works. But God has equal expectation because the one who had one buried it. And a lot of you are going to go back six foot six straight to God the same way he, he, he created you. What have you done with what God has put in your hands for you to control? If you want to manifest a life of of prosperity, a life of abundance, you have to be a good manager, W-O-R-K, you have to work for what you want to have. Now, when the when the one who had, let me read that again, the one who had, um, the one who had five, okay, the one who had five, if you remember the story of the talent, the one who had five brought five more, the one who had two brought two more, what is that, people? Profit, it's called profit. When you take something and you make more, it's called profit. That comes from work. So those of you who are in the name it and claim it game, you just name it, sit back and wait for it to come. That's rubbish and that has nothing to do with belief. Because when you believe something, you move accordingly. You move in that direction. It's like the man who had the field and sold it so he could buy the pearl. Okay, you believe it, you invest in it, you move in that direction. It's called W-O-R-K because the one who had won and buried it, <laughs> what did God, what did the what did the master say to the servant? You should have at least put it in the bank, which means if you don't want to bust yourself and get a sweat, invest it and let it return money. There's no excuse. It is a profit mandate, a mandate that whatever God has put under your control, you must, must, must add to it. That is profit. Profit is the realm of more. Profit is the realm of abundance. That is when you'll have the abundant life, people. Abundance comes with profitable work. When you are a good manager of what God has put under your control, you will be able to enjoy profit. And some will enjoy more profit than others because the one who had five and made five more, he got the one from the one. So those who, have, you know, they always say, those who have much, have much more, and those who have little will lose it. It comes straight out of the Bible. So you, you're worried about the little you have. If you're not positioning yourself for God's favor, you'll lose even that. You will lose even that. So guys, Matthew 25, 20, and I'm done. The one who received five talents came forward bringing another five and said, Sir, you gave me five talents. Here I have made five more. Made, made, work, made. He did his work. He brought his profit. He is living in abundance. He has more and more and more. The Bible talks about if you have two coats, you give one. Two means you have more than you need for yourself. The only place that sacrificial giving is sp spoken of in the Bible is in the area of tithing. Tithing. Other than that, God does not ask us to take from our little and give away where we are now in need. No, the Bible gives us examples. If you have two coats, you give one. You still have one for you. Your needs are met. God is not asking us to be in want to help those who are also in want and we're all in want together. No, there are too many broke Christians in line for a handout instead of being in that God's positional power to give others a hand up. So ready or not, guys, go for it. Create the life that you deserve. I may have your solution. 
you can check me out over at trudybearman.com. I'm, I'm always hanging out on Facebook. You can tap me there and I'll be willing. And if you do ask any questions after this, I'll be happy to circle back and get with you on that. If you have any questions, like I said, but I'm done at exactly the time, one o'clock. So I'm good. Guys, thank you all for, for participating live or later. I do appreciate you. True Bearman here. I am super simple to find and I do look forward to connecting with you.